Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to hack, repair, and maintain a printer. So my printer left me with a present today. Yeah. That didn't work out so well. Nozzle jammed. So we're going to fix that. Now you get to see messy work table. Now, nozzle jammed. I already tried the normal solution to this, which is crank up the temperature as high as it'll go and try to push plastic through. That kind of worked. Little driblets of plastic came out, so it's not totally clogged, but not enough to actually fix the problem. So now we're gonna go with a hard core on it. I got this little needle thingy. I'm gonna get it nice and hot, and I'm gonna poke it until I can clear it out of there and get the plastic flowing. And then I figure while I'm here, I'm going to replace this PTFE tube with the Capricorn tube, which is supposed to be good to 340C, which will remove the physical temperature restrictions on this printer. And might as well make that upgrade while I'm in here. Um, well, to do that, you're going to pop this tube out of here. You squeeze this little pressure fitting here, and this tube comes out. I already removed this. It's a little easier than it would be. This one, however, is different. You can't just pop the tube out of this one. It's one way. So you have to unscrew this, take it off, and then you push the tube all the way through the other end until it comes out. And then we will put the new tube in place. So hang with me as we get to that. By the way, the little two-way wrench that the printers come with, that will work on getting that off. Alrighty, so the nozzle's hot, and I got this thing and I stuck it up where the sun don't shine. It was not too happy about it, but now as you can see, it's all clear. So I'll be able to jam a bunch of filament through there and clear that bugger out. See the culprit? Looks like the glitter stuff caked up in there. So I might want to increase the temperature that I run the glitter stuff at just to make sure it flows a little better. That's all glitter stuff from the twinkling filament. Alright, there we go. It's all cleaned out. Now the last thing you do is after you've pulled it a couple of times, you push the filament through and you pull it. I shortened the Bowden tube since I'm getting rid of it. Made it easier to push through. Then um, what you do is when you've got it reasonably clean, you turn the printer off or turn the heat off, let it cool down. And then you keep gently pushing the filament through. And when it starts to resist, yank it out. And if you do it right, you get that. See how it's the shape of the hot end and the nozzle? That little bit is what was sticking in the nozzle. And you can see it's nice and clean. So now I got a nice clean hot end. I figure while we're in here, why not put the hardened nozzle in here as well? Because then I'll have the hardened nozzle and the high temperature. And I'm also going to replace these absolutely rubbish, garbage screws that this thing comes with. And I'm going to replace them with some proper cap screws. They take a larger wrench and they are M2s to hold the shroud in place because I'm tired of dealing with those stinking things. So heat the nozzle up, take your wrench, size it for your heat block, and then use your little wrench to crack the nozzle free. Once you've unscrewed it a couple turns, you can turn the printer off and we can then remove the nozzle and replace it with the new hardened nozzle. There we go. So. This is the original brass nozzle. And why aren't you focusing? There you go. And the it's in good shape, no problems with it. That's the filament. And this is the new Micro Swiss A2 hardened steel nozzle. I decided not to go plated, just go with the A2 hardened steel. I know it'll be nice and tough. And it should be the exact same, I hope. It should be the same threading. Looks it. And this should apply to any Creality printer, whether it's the Ender, the CR10 Mini, CR10 7 or 8, uh, basically uh, S3, S4, S5, basically any of their printers that uses this hot end. Um, and this will work with. And probably the ANETs too, since they use a very similar hot end. I wouldn't be surprised if it's exactly the same, I'm not sure. But um, I also have the Capricorn tube cut down to size. I made it a little bit smaller because I think it was a little too big. 
and the shorter you can make the bowden tube, the better. But you can't go too short because if you bend it too much of an angle, filament will have trouble getting through. But this is also a more slippery tube, so that'll help with that. So now I'm going to put the new nozzle in place and install the compression fitting back into the printer and then install the new Bowden tube into the printer. Alrighty, new hot end is installed and ready to go. So I now have Capricorn tubing, which means the printer can go to its full firmware limited 260 degrees Celsius temperature without melting anything. And in theory, later on, I can hopefully figure out how to get into the firmware and increase that. Because if I increase that to 300C, I can do polycarbonates, which would be interesting. And new A2 hardened steel nozzle. Compression fitting back in. What I like to do is um, I put the tube in first and see how far in it goes to make sure it's actually going in far enough so you're not catching something inside there. And then um, I unscrew this a little bit, push the tube in, and then finish the last two or three turns um, to kind of make sure it's in there good. So there's no gap between the tube and the hot end because that's where filament can fester. And then back on here again, one of the first things I'm going to print is some clips. They make little clips that you can stick in here so that this does not come undone. You see this one here doesn't like to stay down. It stays down like that. So it doesn't like to stay out. And if it pops down like that, this tube can pop out during retraction. So a little clip would go there, a little clip would go there, and it would keep these from coming loose. That's it. I'm going to now reassemble this. So put this back on. And use my new M2 cap screws instead of those stupid little dome screws that strip out all the time. And go from there. Matter of fact, maybe I'll replace these while I'm in here too. Because those would be easy to replace. There we go. Nice shiny new cap screws instead of those stinking little dome pan head screws. So that will last a lot better. It uses a larger wrench. And these don't tend to strip out nearly as easily as these kind do. So... Every time I take any of this kind of bolt off the printer, especially if it's something that has to be tightened, like for this, I replace it with a cap screw. I have a little kit here, and it's got all my different lengths of 2mm screws, because that's typically what they are, is 2mm. So we'll go from there. And I did misspeak. These are 3mm. These are M3 8mm, and the two for the um, cold zone of the hot end are M3 16mm. These are much longer than they need to be. M3 4s will be fine, but... Nothing interferes. It doesn't touch anything, and I've already checked. This slide's fine. So if all you have is M38s, that's fine. And the inside here needs M316 to be equal to the length of the original one. So here's the original for that. And here's the original for that. So we should be good to go now to be able to boot back up. It is alive. It is printing my Marvin. There we go. And this is at 235C for some um, Make of Geeks Crystal PLA. This is actually a test print of one of the Pyramid PLAs I'll be using. That's it. We're good to go. So I will let you guys know if there's any problems with the new configuration, but I don't anticipate any problems. More to come! Well, that's it. That is fixed. Hopefully you guys like that. Hopefully I don't get a repeat of this. <laughs> so it turns out that the sparkles from this eventually clogged it up. Isn't that interesting? So you guys have a great day. I will have more video coming soon. I have a Tinkercad how-to coming up for how I made the plinth for the Einstein model. And you guys have a great night. <laughs>